The border is closed. The border is secure. And the border is secure. Uh, the border is closed. The border is secure. And the border is not open. We have a secure border. I can tell you the, it, the border is secure. By what measure is it secure now, sir? So there, there is not a common definition. The president has done more to secure the border and to deal with this issue of immigration than anybody else. He really has. Uh, we're certainly uh, doing a lot more to secure the border. As you know, the president has done everything that he can. Uh, he's done that alone uh, without the help of Republicans. Why aren't you guys stopping the flow at the border? We are stopping the flow at the border. Secretary Mayorkas, do you continue to maintain that the border is secure? Yes, and we are working day in and day out to enhance its security. The removal of Title 42 does not mean the border is open. The border is secure, but we also have a broken immigration system. We have done a lot of work here to fix this system. I think the message um, uh, uh, is, in fact, not to come uh, to the border. I don't think the more than 1.5 million people who have been removed or expelled uh, from the border would consider the border open. Somebody walks into Texas or Arizona unvaccinated, they're allowed to stay. But, Why? But that's not how it works. Like, we actually, no. I know that that's not what you guys want to happen, but that is what, ha- what is happening. But that's not, it's not like somebody walks over and <laughs> that's not, that's, that's not how. That's exactly what's happening. That's uh, Newsbusters. I'm Mark Levin. It's a thrill to be back. But there's more, Mr. Producer. Cut 14, go. It is my testimony that the border is secure. We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. We have taken unprecedented action over the past year and a half to secure our border. And we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. We're working to make sure it's safe and orderly and humane. The border is closed. We agree that uh, the border is secure. We're executing a comprehensive strategy to secure our borders. One of our highest priorities is to ensure that we have a secure border. And that is what we are doing. The border is secure. And there's more. So the border was secure three weeks ago, four weeks ago. That was the Democrat talking point, the talking point from the White House, the talking point from the DHS secretary, both under sworn testimony and otherwise. It was the talking points from every single Democrat in the House and in the Senate, the talking points of the Democrat Party media. The border is secure. Now, all of a sudden, if you don't pass this bipartisan legislation, the border won't be secure. First of all, let's look at the lineup. You have Mitch McConnell, who's an open borders guy, and of course Chuck Schumer, who is a lawless reprobate. You have Joe Biden, I'll get to him in a minute, who has intentionally burned down the border and anything that secures our country. Then you have the usual rhinos. You have Karl Rove out there with his whiteboard and his seven points, swearing that he actually read the bill. No, he didn't. I read the bill. He didn't read the bill. You have other Republicans who've gone out there and have made fools of themselves, lying about what's in this bill, and I challenge anybody to try and read it. First of all, it's very thorough, very bureaucratic, You can see the tricky language. What they do is give with one hand and take with the other. They would effectively legalize the millions and millions of people who've come into the country illegally. This 5,000 a day, they say, well, that doesn't mean 5,000 a day are allowed in. That's the threshold. After that, we have an emergency. You can close the border. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody's supposed to come into this country who's coming in illegally. Nobody. What do you mean 5,000? The Secretary of Department of Homeland Security under Obama said over 1,000 they had a disaster on their hands. Now 5,000 is the threshold. This is how Washington works. This is how our ruling class elites work. This is how they work inside the Beltway where their policies are not felt as they are in the rest of the country. And they're lying to you. Now, I want you to listen to this. You don't have to hear the substance of every point, but I want to show you what Joe Biden did 
What Joe Biden did when he became president of the United States, and this is dated February 2nd, 2021, a week and a half after he became president from the Center for Migration Studies, Biden has issued the following immigration-related executive orders and administrative policy changes since his first day in office. Proclamation on ending discriminatory bans on entry to the United States, first day in office. Executive order on the revision of civil immigration enforcement policy and priorities, where he guts immigration enforcement policies. That was his first day. Preserving and fortifying deferred action for childhood arrivals. That's DACA, which is an illegal administrative act. There's been no statute for it. He did that on his first day. Proclamation on the termination of emergency. With respect to the southern border of the United States and redirection of funds diverted away from the border wall. January 20, 2021. So he says, I need emergency powers. He has them. He had them. He signed an executive order to kill them. He can sign one to revive them on his very first day. Still on his first day. Executive order and ensuring a lawful and accurate enumeration and and apportionment pursuant to the Desiano census. In other words, counting illegal aliens. More. Let's see here. Memorandum. U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021. On his first day. On his first day, DHS stepped in on the suspension of new enrollments in the Migrant Protection Protocols Program. Proclamation on the suspension of entry as immigrants and non-immigrants of certain additional persons who pose a risk of transmitting coronavirus disease, January 5, 2021. Executive order in creating a comprehensive regional framework to address the causes of migration. He's the cause. To manage migration through North and Central America to provide safe and orderly processing of asylum seekers at the United States border. February 2nd. Now, these titles are misleading. That should be called the rubber stamp executive order. Come in line, we rubber stamp you in. Executive order restoring faith in our legal immigration system and strengthening integration and inclusion efforts of new Americans. I don't know, February 2nd. Executive order on the establishment of an interagency task force on reunification of families. Executive order on rebuilding and enhancing programs to resettle refugees and planning for the impact of climate change on migration. Memorandum for the Secretary of State on the Emergency Presidential Determination on Refugee Admissions for Fiscal 2021. In other words, you pretty much have to say you're a refugee trying to leave a country that persecutes you, and you're in. They know the language. A proclamation of the suspension of entry as non-migrants of, of certain additional persons who pose a risk of transmitting coronavirus. You might recall they lifted that as fast as they could. That Rule 42. Memorandum for the Secretary of State on the Emergency Presidential Determination on Refugee Admissions for Fiscal Year 2021. Now, the proclamation on ending discriminatory bans on entry to the United States, January 2021, it left certain restrictions on immigrant visas for nationals coming from Burma, Eritrea, Iran, Venezuela, Kyrgyzstan, Libya, North Korea, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, Tanzania and Yemen. Trump had put a limited ability to get these, uh, these visas on these countries. U.S. embassies and consulates of those countries can resume visa processing, must ensure that pending visa and waiver applicants are not prejudiced by the previous bans. From 2017 to 2020, former President Trump issued a series of travel bans preventing net nationals of Muslim-majority and select African countries from entering the United States, Biden rescinded the travel bans uh, effective immediately in his proclamation. He characterized the bans as a stain on our national conscience. No, he's a stain, not only in his depends, but on our nation. The initial travel ban suspended the issuance of visas to nationals from Iran, Iraq, Sudan, Syria, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen for 90 days. These are all hotbeds of terrorism. That's why Trump did it. And that is a stain on our national conscience? No. Executive order on the revision of civil immigration enforcement policies and priorities, January 20, 21. 
He revised immigration enforcement policies and priorities and rescinded the Trump administration executive order, which called for the prompt removal of all undocumented immigrants living in the United States and withdrew federal funding from so-called sanctuary states. Biden's executive order directed relevant federal agencies to issue new guidance about immigration enforcement policies. In other words, he killed deportation. Killed it. Those who have engaged in or suspected of terrorism or espionage or whose arrest is otherwise necessary to protect national security. In response to Biden's executive order, David Pekoski immediately issued a memorandum directing DHS agencies to review enforcement policies and provide recommendations. Uh, who were not U.S. citizens before November 1, who voluntarily waive any rights to remain in the United States, who acting ICE director determines must leave the country. How do you even know that, that, which is the point, when people are coming in illegally over the border and you're not vetting them? That's the problem. And the termination of the emergency with respect to the southern border, which he did on day one, Biden halted construction of the wall along the border, stated the funds for border wall construction would be reallocated following a review of construction contracts. In April 2021, Defense Department announced it's coordinating with interagency partners to cancel border wall project contracts. That's what he did. Let's see. Executive order on ensuring a lawful and accurate enumeration and apportionment pursuant to the decennial census. So, of course, he's very worried on day one that all immigrants, mostly and including illegal immigrants, are counted for the distribution of congressional districts. It goes on. This U.S. Citizenship Act, January 20, Biden endorsed the U.S. Citizenship Act, memorializing his commitment to modernize the U.S. immigration system. Done a fantastic job. Bill would represent the most sweeping immigration reform package since 1990. This is where they won't vote on my comprehensive immigration reform. He had the bill ready on the day he was inaugurated. Now, what does this require, this this bill that he keeps saying that the Republicans wouldn't support? Provides an eight-year pathway to citizenship for approximately 11 million undocumented immigrants, a.k.a. illegal immigrants. Physically present in the United States on or before January 1, 2021, will be able to apply for temporary... Lo- let, let, me, let me just cut to the chase, America. The people in Washington, D.C. have destroyed citizenship. They've destroyed security on the border. They've destroyed American sovereignty. They've allowed 10 million people into this country who are not vetted, many of whom are, would be or will be criminals. Terrorists, likely. They've made the drug cartels richer than they've ever been. They've created havoc in our streets, death with fentanyl and other toxic drugs. You can see what they're doing to our schools, our health care system, our parks, our communities. You can see the drag on resources, America. There's seven and a half billion people outside the United States. What if one billion, two billion, three billion want to come here? What Biden did, with the help of his Obama apparatchiks, is Cloward and Piven, two Marxist professors. What do they do? They talk about overwhelming the system. He's overwhelmed the system. Mitch McConnell and the boys are too ignorant and stupid about this Marxist movement and what's happening to our country. This guy Lankford is a complete, you know, deer in the uh, headlights guy. They're negotiating with the people who've perpetrated all this. Donald Trump says when he comes in office, he wants to track down a lot of these people and deport them. This law would essentially prevent that. This wall, this spe- they spend no real money on a wall. They give it in one hand and take it with the other, despite what Karl Rove's whiteboard says. in his talking points from McConnell and the boys. It would be nice if our Congress would spend this much time on American citizens, on American security. But they won't. The same party that said three weeks ago the border is secure, the same man who burned down our immigration laws, now they say they have a special law to secure the border. No, they don't. It's a special law. 
for 10 million people effectively to get amnesty and millions more to come. There's your bottom line.